You're listening to 88.7 WLUW, Chicago Sound Alliance, broadcasting from the campus of Loyola University. It's live from the heartland with Tom Clark and Katie Hogan. On today's show, we'll be having conversations with Harry Osterman, 48th Ward Alderman, and a lot of music in the second half with Don O'Keefe Williams and the Gingers. Thank you for listening and enjoy the show. Yep. Bo James. Remembering Bo James. And uh, that was Dean Martin, who we almost never play on this show, uh, from a play about Bo James, who was the uh, Jimmy Walker, the Tammany Hall mayor of New York from 26 to 32. Uh, okay. And now the show is first... live from the Heartland, and we're here on WAUW Chicago 88.7 FM. Please check us out on youtube.com slash Heartland Media. And now we turn to one of our very favorite neighboring politicians who got through in the first election in February, free and clear, while looking back now at all sorts of runoffs and some new neighbors. Calm in the storm. Harry Osterman. Calm in the storm oh, on the north side. Is that what you're calling yourself Calm now. in the storm. Uh, <laughs> it's great to be here with you. I have my daughter Katie, hey, Katie. with me. Katie, say hi. Hello. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there was a lot of a lot of lot of change on the north side, and I think throughout the city. And uh, we have a new mayor, uh, Mayor Lori Lightfoot. So it's going to be a uh, real interesting uh, election. Not election. Real <laughs> interesting city council uh, coming up this May and, and summer and taking on the challenges that we have facing our city. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Harry Osterman, we, uh, we've we worked together uh, in many capacities over the years, I'm happy to say. Um, you've now been an alderman almost 20 years. Elected official. So state, Elected official. state rep, 11 oh, years in Springfield, um, which I remember fondly. Yes. And uh, the last eight years as alderman of the 48th Warden Uptown in Edgewater. And, uh, um, you know, it, it's gone by really quick. So why is it, why is the 48th Ward the calm in the storm? I think uh, there's lots of factors, and every ward's different and every election's different. Um, you know, my focus has been really to be responsive to the people in my community and make it safer, work on our schools, our public uh, schools like Sen High School and our grade schools, and really help support small business. So I think that um, the things that we've been doing um, – have been kind of on point with what my residents want and um, you know we're going to keep doing that um, and I think with the new new mayor and, and new new alderman I think it's going to be lots of changes but I'm you know really looking forward to helping not just my community but other communities and try to help some of these new aldermen understand what it is to you know be an alderman and um, but also really work on some bigger city issues like safety and economic development across the city I think that um, Oftentimes, um, when you're really focused on the neighborhood, you lose sight of the fact that it's important that for our city to grow the south and west side. And I think for me, I've really um, that's important that we have safety, we've got good jobs, we've got great schools on the south and west side so that um, those neighborhoods are seeing what we're seeing in Rogers Park, Edgewater, and Uptown. Wow. So a little closer to home, you have two new neighboring aldermen who replaced longtime incumbents. Uh, in the council even longer than you have been. Um, do you know Andre and Maria? How do you expect to be working with them on northeast side issues? So I met with Maria, and I'm going to be meeting with Andre, um, and um, I'm going to look, we're going to work together on things. I think that there's a lot of things that we have to work on. Uh, you know, Maria and I are going to share the Devon Broadway intersection mm -hmm. and try to bring economic development up the street. Um, on Devon Avenue. And I think the other part of it is on safety issues, Uptown, Edgewater, and Rogers Park, there's a lot of things that happen that affect, you Each. know, I always tell people if something happens on Howard Street, there could be a, a an effect on Thorndale or Wilson sure. Avenue and vice versa. So I think all of us are in it together. I look forward to working with Andre. We're going to share Andersonville um, and Clark Street together. So I think that, you know, um, I'm, I'm very much someone who wants to work together with people. I think that's kind of been how I've been throughout my elected career and before that. And I think, um, you know, whatever I can do to help them, I'm going to help them. So your seniority has just increased. Dramatically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is, do you guys keep track of that? I know somewhere it's there's people a list. keep track of it. I think yeah. here, here's the thing. You know, I hope there'll be leadership opportunities for me that'll be different in this upcoming city council 
than there have been before. And I think it's also the working with the new mayor. Uh, and I'm really committed to working with Lori Lightfoot and her team. She's going to bring in a whole new team. And um, she's got some really um, important things that she wants to do for the city. Uh, it's a historic election, first African-American woman, um, lesbian woman. And I think it's, it's an exciting time for our city. And it, but it, the other part of this is that it's a lot of work. And I think um, elections are important to have happened. But now we're kind of shifting to we got to roll up our sleeves. Right. Summertime, you know, violence ticks up. So for me, making sure our neighborhoods are safe on the north side, but also the city of Chicago, what are we doing? And I think the key part of that also is kind of really rebuilding trust with the police and communities on the south and west side that's been you know um you know really kind of broken for a number of years how do we rebuild that trust so that people work side by side with the police i think that's going to be critical uh for the long haul um th th what you just brought up to me is is the tale of two cities um when we talk about policing in in rogers park it's a very different conversation and very different people show up to have that conversation with the police. We just had one of those uh, consent decree ordered community meetings. And um, there's always uh, parts of the neighborhood missing from that conversation. The South and West Sides haven't even had, they've had a completely different conversation. You know, when they have people like Andrew Holmes calling them together after tragic shootings. What, how do we get the, the tale of two cities um, or do we need to, or do we just need to acknowledge that the, that the two cities exist? And I think it's always important to acknowledge they exist, but I think part of the way I look at it is things didn't happen like that overnight. It was not one incident. It was, we've gotten to this place over decades. And right. I think the challenge is how do we rebuild trust? It's not gonna be overnight. It's not gonna be one summer, not one community meeting. It's gonna be neighborhood by neighborhood, relationship by relationship. And like anything, it's about reestablishing trust. It's going to be slow, um, methodical, um, listening to people, trusting people. But here's the thing that I always look at. If we don't do that, we're going to continue to be worse off. Right. So I think that the new mayor, um, the police department, new departments within the city of Chicago are going to have to really kind of roll up their sleeves and also work with people in those communities um, on a community, commu community by community basis. So what may work in Rogers Park or Edgewater may not work in other parts of the city. Clearly, but right. listening to people and really finding out what they want for their community, um, I think is really important. And it has to happen. Yeah, good answer. When you look at uh, the new faces, you had a council meeting this past week where the old and the new were outside. Um, <laughs> Um, Demonstrating. Um, Love you guys. I, I, I'm curious, when, when you're kibitzing, uh, uh, whether it's in the council chambers or behind the famous behind rooms, um, are you going to talk to a Scott Walkisback who's kind of in, seen as kind of Lori's uh, maybe leader, or do you go to Ed Burke as he tries to figure out where he's going to end up and still has power and is trying to organize an independent city council? I work with everybody. Um, Ed Burke and I have had a lot of conversations. Um, Wait, what? What? What was that? We have not had a lot of conversations. That's what I thought you said. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I think that you know, there's, there's, there's the other elephant in the room is that there's legal issues facing. Uh, so a, many of your comrades. A lot of my colleagues. Some of them <laughs> weren't at the meeting uh, because of that. So, so there's, there's a real issue of we have to reform how we do business in Chicago. And we have to make sure that we're doing everything we can to provide the inspector general, um, doing things ethically. I mean, one of my advices to the new the new city council members is work with the board of ethics. You know, we call them all the time. We have to really put a focus on what we can do to reform it, to build trust too. When we talk about trust, you know, it's, it's trust in people that are taxpayers that want to make sure that things are done ethically and that in business people that want to invest that things are being done ethically. So I think that there's a lot of work we have before us on that front. Um, but I work with everybody and I think um, part of, you know, part of being uh, an, a good elected official is kind of understanding perspectives that everyone has. And I think we've got an incredibly diverse city and um, people on all sides of the issue. And I think it's going to be really interesting trying to work with all the new members and the people that have been there to kind of, you know, what are those things that we can work together on? Well, luckily, a lot of the new members are real smart. 
So they should actually be able to listen to reason if reason is actually bandied, bandied about in city council. Uh, can I ask you, did you vote for the Lincoln Yards? I voted against it, and I voted against the 78. I think... Uh, Rock on! You know, I use the term uh, Schomburg Yards. Uh, we need, you know, we need to grow our city. We need to have economic development. Um, but I think, you know, as, as someone who represents Sheridan Road, Lincoln Yards is going to be Sheridan Road on steroids. Um, I believe in affordable housing. I want housing in buildings on site. I don't think it should be kind of put elsewhere. Thank you. Um, you know. So we as a city have to grow. We have to have construction jobs. We have to have service jobs. I think these big developments would help that, but I want the developers to pay. I don't want the city to pay. These guys are going to make the money, and for us to wait 23 years uh, to recoup the property taxes, my daughter will be you know, you know, out, of, out of college, out of grad school by then. So I think that um, I think what's going to happen is the new mayor is going to come in. They're going to go over these these uh, developments, um, I would think that there's going to be a great deal of revisions, but I voted against it. And um, Thank you. Uh, you know. did, did Lori Lightfoot... From, from a whole bunch of citizens. Thank you. Did Lori Lightfoot stub her toe this week, or did she draw a line in the sand? I don't think she stubbed her toe. I think here's, here's the thing. She got a, a significant amount of money that's going to go to minority and women-owned businesses. And I think, I think the real... Um, I think what's going to happen is once she's sworn in, her team is going to go and they're going to look at these deals and they're going to probably find things that um, need to be changed that are going to be more beneficial to the taxpayers. We also are going to try to get some state capital money. So if there's ways that you know some of that money can go to shrink on what this TIF might be, I think it's going to be a better deal. So I have full confidence that over the next year, um, this will be a better deal for taxpayers and, and Chicagoans. You have run several very successful election cycles, both as state rep and now uh, alderman. So I want to talk a little bit about the mechanics that we've been through all these elections recently, midterms, February, now uh, May, and we, we have a few months before the next cycle starts. Um, did you get a sense that social media played a bigger role in this recent campaign or is it still the ground game and that makes it i think increasingly social media is changing elections um you know it used to be a lot of campaigns were driven by mail and i think if you look at the 40th ward as an example um there was a lot of mail and um there was people going on social media saying that it, you know too much mail i'm using you could pick any ward Yep. like that. But I think increasingly now using social media has got a quicker response time, more personalized. Um, and it's also what it's doing is it's making it more economical to run. So someone who uh, instead needed to raise $150,000 or $200,000 to run a campaign, now you can run a campaign on thirty five dollars or $40,000. No, you so, can't. Well, I, I, think, <laughs> I think that it'll be interesting to see after the the dust settles on these elections, who spent what, you right. know? And um, some of my colleagues were on television, right? Which is kind of to me unheard of for an aldermanic campaign. Crazy. So um, I think what you're going to see increasingly is uh, use of social media. But at the core, I think to be successful, it's it's talking to neighbors. You know, are the neighbors on the blocks? happy with the work you're doing are you present are you out in the community all the time and i think um you know i think if, to be successful you got to be out there with the people you know i was on monday night i was out in andersonville with 50 neighbors looking at trees that might have to come down because of a water main project um they were angry because the trees might come down but i think they appreciated the fact that i was there with everyone um explaining yeah explaining here's what's going on so i think that um the human side of things uh is always important and i also what i'm seeing i think a little bit now is um you know, you used to have a lot more community organizations, and I think with social media and the internet, it's a lot easier to shoot an email off at two in the morning. But I also think more and more people want to gather with their neighbors, and I think so. We're going to really try to do some things in, in our ward to kind of 
bring people together on key issues. In the summertime, we do 100 safety events with neighbors. Um, you know, people gathering on street corners in a positive way, Argyle Night Market. Um, so I think that there's a real value and people want that personal connection. I think that's what makes neighborhoods strong. Talk about your Youth Jobs Day activity today. So today we have um, from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock over at the Broadway Armory, uh, 5917 North Broadway Youth Job Fair, where we've got 20 providers basically signing kids up for summer jobs. So I would encourage anyone that's got a teenager at home, wake them up. Shake them out of bed. Get them over to the Broadway Armory. Uh, there's a lot of lots of jobs opportunities. Um, if not, go to my website, 48thward.org, and uh, check it out. But um, part of the success on safety in my community is really providing more opportunity for young people. Summer jobs means a great deal. We just opened a new teen center within the Armory so young kids can, teenagers can kind of do homework and hang You're out so after school. so lucky to have that space. It's a great space that we keep building out in. But the more that we can do for young people, I think, has a huge effect on an entire community so I think um, you know we really work really hard to make sure that we provide opportunities and and give kids a chance to succeed in life are there other things going on in the ward now that you are of, of, a, in a, of a more senior status and um, that you want to try to get done you know we uh, that's a great question there you know uh, there are some traffic issues that are um, ongoing, Broadway safety. I think I hope to work with Maria Haddon on. I want people that are coming from Evanston to slow down as they go by Loyola and down Why don't we Road. just put up a really yeah. big sign? Yeah, we could. Just slow down. Kids slow live down. here. Like your neighborhood, please <laughs> so slow down. They, they kind of barrel in. So, I mean, there's some traffic issues. I mean, the, the one huge thing that I have to deal with over the next you know, a couple years is we're rebuilding the red line. So President Obama in his last week of office gave a grant to the CTA to redo Lawrence to Hollywood. And I'm really working with everyone um, to try to deal with how we're going to live through that, including the business community, the residents. So that's going to be a huge endeavor. Um, but we're just going to keep doing what we've been doing, helping our schools. Sen High School is doing great. Um, really advancing. People are choosing to go there, um, bringing in small businesses. So um, just kind of keep doing what I've been doing. Small businesses you have unique uh, and tons of success with. Um, and I say that, uh, yeah, with green eyes of envy from the ward north of you. We uh, just found out this week that our beautiful um, Royal Coffee is closing at the end of the month, which brings to about three or four eating or drinking or coffee establishments that have significant ones too, like the Heartland, that have closed in the last six months. Um, it's really hard to do business in this city if you don't have oodles and oodles of money. How do we change that? Because as you know, uh, people are crying on my shoulder about the Heartland, which is like, where's my tears? You know, come yeah. on. Uh, but I, I know how hard it is uh, to do it even when you've got all the privileges in the world if, if you don't have money but uh how do we how do we get how do you encourage businesses to come into your ward so it's a bigger helpful? issue i think that we have to look and make sure that city government's not stifling growth and that Thank we're you. not overtaxing and we're not over regulating and um you know make sure that we're, we're dealing with health and, and and safety issues so that businesses are getting licensed properly but um we have to make sure that you know, it's getting tougher with the internet, right? People are going on Uber Eats for 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 every little thing, right. and um, so citywide, we have to look at how we're doing that. But I think locally, what's really been what I've focused on, and I think what Alderman have to do is you got to really go out and, and kind of sell your community. You have to really go out and, and try to match businesses for locations, and that's it that takes a lot of time and energy, but it pays off, and I think. Um, business owners want to know that um, when they move into a community that, you know, that um, people are there to support them. And the other part of this is, I think, for residents, you know, residents that want Royal Coffee, they got to walk down the street and spend money at the local oh, business. Absolutely. And what's really important, and we use we do this all the time, is people have to understand that if they support a local small business, that um, that money stays in the neighborhood more. When you're going to the new target on uh, on Sheridan and Devon, Police. that money's going back to Minnesota. You know, yeah, Minnesota, and you know, nothing great against for Minnesota. Minnesota, but hey, we need it here. Hey, so, Katie, I got a question for you. Katie, so get off the floor, babe. 
Katie likes Target, but um, <laughs> we really support local small business. It's Record uh, Store Saturday, and we've got Rattleback Records in Andersonville and uh, Audio Archaeology on uh, on Devon Avenue. So nice. we're going to go hit some record stores today. Hey, Kate, what's the thing you'd like most for uh, your neighborhood if you had anybody, say, in your family who could make a difference about getting things done in your neighborhood? Um, I will want more Lushes and Targets and, like, a big mall. Okay, step away from the mic, Kate. Uh. <laughs> Katie thinks it's still April Fool's Day, so... She can take the Lunt bus yeah. off the red line malls are gone. to Lincolnwood. You know, yeah. We survived malls. We survived... Uh, uh, mattress stores are kind of going out of business, so we're getting some of our storefronts <laughs> back. How many the, mattresses can you buy? The one, the one key issue, though, that I, I am spending a lot more time on, and this kind of goes with the the CTA development, is affordable housing. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I really want to make sure that people that have been in our community for a long time have the chance to stay there. So Amen. I think that as we look at bigger developments along Broadway, where we've got the space to do it, I want to see more affordable housing. We've got some things coming online um, near Argyle and Broadway, but as as the development with the CTA goes, there's going to be bigger buildings along Broadway. I want to make sure there's more affordable units there because, you know, I grew up in a very diverse community. I want my daughter Katie to grow up in a diverse community as well, and I think that that takes work. Doing doing nothing, um, the market's going to change things, so it's going to be, um, I'm going to be working a lot on that issue to kind of keep my neighborhood as diverse as possible. Alderman Harry Osterman, what a treat to have you back. Now we've got all these musicians in the outer room. Rock out today. Can, and, we, can um, we have you back in six months? I would to love to come back check with, in? with six months, and uh, uh, Michael will be back, and who yeah. knows, by then uh, there might be something legalized in Illinois. How so. about that? Heavens to Betsy. <laughs> We'll Have be. a great day. Thank you. Thank you, you so too. much. And good luck with the youth uh, job fair today up in uh, Edgewater at the Armory. You're listening Bless to your WLUW hearts. 88.7 FM and live from the Heartland. Please check out our musical artist for Live from the Heartland now available on Spotify.